Senator Hartling. Thank you, Chair, and I'd like to thank Ms. Redfern and Ms. Sharp for appearing before us on this very difficult subject, and we appreciate uh, your wisdom as we try and seek a path forward. Um, so I want to ask you a question about if you have seen any improvements since 2019 when we embarked on our study and an interim report was published. And we've also heard from Indigenous Services Canada that the federal government has committed $33.3 million for Indigenous midwifery and doula initiatives. And I want to ask you whether any of this money has filtered through to Inuit women and if there has been an impact even likely at this early stage, have you, have you observed any points of light as a result of the federal funding? Uh, thank you. So I do think that as a result of this work, that it is becoming more publicly aware that forced sterilization did occur and not even that long ago. And it's opened up um, questions for some women who wondered um, if they were sterilized and that is why they stopped having children. Um, as, I was, as I said earlier, there's um, uh, a, a lot of these times these procedures did not, did, did happen without the women even knowing about it. Uh, I haven't actually seen um, any of the funding that you speak of uh, make it to most of our women um, in the communities uh, reaching out just, you know, even to say, do you think that you may have been sterilized, uh, being able to, you know, have access to the medical records to see if that did occur, um, let alone any sort of form of counseling and or um, compensation. So I don't know if it's a question of uh, the fact that the federal government is working through our national or our regional Inuit associations, um, but I can tell you um, the women that we have engaged with, um, it's opened up more questions about sort of uh, their own potential family or individual status, but uh, nothing beyond that that I'm aware of. Thank you, Chair. Do I have time for a follow-up? Uh, yes, you do. So, Ms. Ratburn, uh, if, if and when the money comes to Inuit women, how would you and your association or Ms. Sharp and her association want to invest it so that it does have an impact? I think it would be important for Pautudi, Amauti, and the Kudluk status of women and other uh, regions, women's organizations, um, find a way collaboratively to um, uh, develop some sort of program that helps women come forward. Um, being able, able to access their medical records is, you know, has been a, a real mm -hmm. challenge and, and being able to even inspect that. Um, uh, especially if they have a suspicion that maybe they were sterilized because, you know, um, they stopped having children, as I, as I said, even though um, they hadn't reached menopause and, and that stage of their life. Um, so I do think that there is an, there is an opportunity to work collaboratively um, to, to do it well. Uh, but as I said, there may be you know some women um, that voluntarily choose not to know because it might just actually be too painful. So it's, it's offering um, that option. Um, but uh, in addition, counseling is, is incredibly important because learning that the government did this to you where you may have not known or just simply suspected uh, is, is very, very painful. Um, and so it's, we need the full services in Nunavut, up to 50% of our mental health counseling positions are, are usually vacant for the last 25 years, may even be worse since COVID. Um, so it's, it's money doesn't alone, you know, um, uh, necessarily help an individual deal with, uh, with all the emotional um, uh, revelations that come with, uh, with uh, learning that, that information. So we need to be very careful about how we, how we would develop a, a program and Thank support. You. 
Thank you so much.